Good day to everyone. Welcome to our lecture on determining the height, age, and weight of horses and equine exercise physiology. So first, we will discuss about determining the height of horses. How tall is the average horse? Why are horses measured in hands? And how to measure a horse? So how tall is the average horse? Horses come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. And you will find that their bodies differ depending on their breed, genetics, diet, and the amount of exercise they get. So the average horse stands around 5 feet tall and weighs 800 to 1,200 pounds. So to be considered a horse, the animal must stand at least 57 inches tall, though some equines are barely more than 2 feet. So the average horse measures are between 13.3 to 17.13 hands tall or 1.4 to 1.18 meters. So the figure being referred to includes all horses' breeds. Horses span a large range of sizes from rather compact to incredibly massive. Most of them fall somewhere closer to the middle. On average, horses are about 5 feet in height. So many horses are taller and plenty are shorter, but 5 feet is about average. Horse heights are not generally expressed in inches, um, rather they usually express in hands, and a 5 foot tall horse is 15 hands in height. So looking at the different types of horses in more detail reveals more variance in height, with some being much shorter and some much being taller on average. So the light riding horses are typically 14 to 16 hands, or 1.42 to 1.63 in meters. Large riding horses are 15.2 to 17 in hands, or 1.57 to 1.73 meters. And lastly, the heavy or draft horses are usually 16 to 18 in hands, or 1.63 to 1.83 in meters. So, here are some of the common breeds of horse found in the UK and their average height range. So, the average height in hands of the Arabian horse is 14.1 to 15.1 in inches it is 57 to 61 cleveland bay horse is 16.16.2 hands or 64 to 66 inches dale's pony it is 13 to 14 hands or 52 to 56 inches exmoor pony 11.1 to 12.3 in hands or 45 to 51 in inches Fell pony, it is 13.2 to 14 hands or 54 to 56 in inches. Holsteiner, 16 to 17 hands or 64 to 68 inches. Irish draught horse, it is 15.1 to 16.3 in hands or 61.63 in inches. New forest pony, 12 to 14.2 in hands or 48 to 58 in inches. Percheron, 16 to 17 in hands or 64 to 68 inches. Shire Horse, 16 to 17 hands or 64 to 68 in inches. Thoroughbred Horse, 15 to 15.2 to 17.2 in hands or 62 to 70 in inches. And lastly, the Willara, 11.2 to 15 hands or 46 to 60 in inches. Why are horses measured in hands? Thousands of years ago, there are no measuring tapes lying around or a metric system for that matter. People needed a way of measuring their riding horses for purposes of selling and trading. And so, they used a unit of measurement that they always had with them, and it is their hands. A hand is a historical unit of measurement used to measure the height of horses and is still widely used in a lot of English-speaking countries. In equestrianism, it has been kept as the preferred unit of measure in spite of both imperial and metric systems as it is a part of tradition. It is often abbreviated to H or HH which means hands high. The term hands has its origin in the Germanic language. Specifically, it is derived from the ancient. The ground beneath our feet is a powerful reminder of the strength and resilience of the natural world, providing us with a solid foundation to build upon and a source of nourishment to sustain us. 
which was used when measuring and recording the height of the horses since the Middle Ages. This term was further adopted by other nations and languages, such as French and Dutch, to refer to horse measurements, eventually evolving into what we have now referred to as hand system worldwide. Now let us talk about the history of using hands to measure horses. Ancient Egyptians used a unit of measurement called cubits, which is one of the earliest form of measurements that we have on record. Cubits were the length of a man's arms from the elbow to the tip of the middle finger. As a simple, understandable practice, ancient societies used part of their bodies to measure things. There are records of Egyptians using their hands or the distance from their thumb to the pinky finger as a way of measuring horses for trading purposes, which is where the unit of hands likely originated. Opponents, however, claim that measuring in hands does not guarantee accuracy and is inefficient as it relies on human judgment, which can often be imprecise. They are quick to point out that no two people will interpret something exactly the same due to personal differences, making this form of measurement unreliable for scientific engagement or understanding. Of course, this is not an entirely accurate way of depicting height as every man's hands are a different size. This was a recognized problem, so in 1540, King Henry VIII standardized the hand to equal exactly 4 inches, which is what we still use to measure a horse's height today. This 4-inch standard was widely adopted and is still the preferred unit in the UK, USA, New Zealand, Australia, Canada, and Ireland. Metric units are mostly used in other parts of the world, as well as by the International Federation for Equestrian Sports, or the FEI. Despite its long history, there are some debate as to whether using hands as a measurement is appropriate or adequate. Advocates argue that this approach allows horses to be categorized with great accuracy and delineation, while also preserving the uniqueness that each horse holds over another. As said earlier, the equestrian world is a deeply traditional one and the unit of hands will likely not be phased out in the near future. Hands are an ancient and convenient way to measure horses, have been used for thousands of years, and may be used for centuries to come. Interestingly, the unit of hands is not used to measure any other animal but horses. How to measure a horse? To measure correctly, the horse should be standing on an even surface. Start measuring from the ground directly up to the highest point of the withers. Withers is just lying at the base of the neck, above shoulder, just like what you see in the picture. In measuring, it is best to use measuring stick marked with hand intervals. But then you can use other measuring tools to measure. Just convert the inches or centimeter into hand's height. If you are using a measuring tape, then you need some assistance or help to make it straight to measure properly. Now, how to convert horse measurement? If you already have your horse height in inches, just divide into four. But there will be a chance that the horse have a measurement that cannot be split exactly into whole numbers. For this case, hands high use decimal place to represent the extra length that isn't divisible. Like 0 0.25 is equal to 0 0.1. 0 0.5 is equal to 0 0.2. 0 0.75 is equal to 0 0.3. For example, 63 divided 4 is 15.75, which is 15.3 in hands. Or 57 divided 4 is equal to 14.25, which is 14.1 in hands. Next, we will talk about determining the age of the horse by checking its teeth. Inspecting a horse's teeth to determine its age is an old practice. It is more accurate for younger horses, but becomes less so as the horse gets older. Horses, like people, vary in vigor and longevity, and typically pass their physical peak at 9 to 10 years old. So the age of a horse is determined by examining the 12 front teeth, with the two central pairs being called centers, pincers, or nippers. 
Then, the next four teeth are called intermediates. Lastly, the outer four teeth are called corners. Canine teeth may appear at four or five years old for geldings or stallions, but rarely for mares. There are four main ways to estimate a horse's age based on the appearance of its teeth. This includes occurrence of permanent teeth, disappearance of cups, angle of incidence, and shape of the surface of the teeth. Let me show you a figure of a teeth of a newborn colt. At birth, a colt's mouth doesn't have any teeth that have broken through the gums. Next is the occurrence of permanent teeth. At one year of age, all the baby teeth have grown, but the outermost teeth, called corners, have not yet been subjected to wear. At the age of two, the corners of a horse's mouth start showing signs of wear. The temporary teeth can be distinguished by their smaller size, lighter color, and a well-defined neck that connects the root and gum from the permanent teeth. Next, an image that depicts the permanent center teeth of a typical 3-year-old horse's mouth both in the upper and lower jaw, in comparison to the smaller and lighter colored temporary teeth shown in earlier images, these permanent teeth are larger and darker in color. Next is a 4-year-old mouth. The permanent centers are well developed while the intermediates are immature, and milk teeth are present at the corners. Additionally, tusks or canines have appeared. By the age of 5, all temporary teeth in a horse have been replaced by permanent ones, and this is known as a full mouth. Although the corner teeth appear well matched from a profile view, there is very little wear visible in the upper jaw view. The upper centers are starting to appear round on the inside back surface, and the cups above and below show little wear. The earlier part discusses the two sets of teeth in horses, temporary and permanent, and when they erupt. It also explains how to distinguish between temporary and permanent teeth based on their characteristics. Finally, it describes the timeline for when permanent teeth appear, with all permanent teeth present by the age of 5, which is considered a full mouth. Disappearance of cups Young permanent teeth have deep indentations called cups that are commonly used to determine the age of a horse. Cups in upper teeth are deeper than those in lower teeth, and they wear differently over time. The cups become smooth at different ages in different parts of the mouth. This method of age determination is second in accuracy only to the appearance of permanent teeth. As cups disappear, dental stars appear as narrow, yellow lines, and dark circles in advanced age. So the teeth on the corner of the 6-year-old's mouth appear to have some wear when viewed from the side but the cups in the lower jaw centers should be worn smoother at this age. However, they seem to have less wear than is typical for a 6-year-old. The canines are not fully developed compared to those in 5 years of age, and the dovetail or notch is visible but the angle of incidence has not changed much. And by the age of 7, the dovetail in a horse's mouth typically reaches its maximum development. However, the rounding corner in the picture does not resemble the usual appearance of a 7-year-old's mouth. The angle of incidence has not very become sharp, which is typical for this age. Cups are disappearing from the lower centers and intermediates, but they are still very prominent in the corners and all upper teeth. There are no dental stars visible yet. In this 8-year-old horse's mouth, the notch on the upper corner tooth has almost disappeared and all the cups in the lower jaw are gone, but those in the upper jaw remain intact. The teeth are now more oval in the back surfaces than in younger horses, and the angle of incidence is getting sharper. Dental stars have appeared in four lower and two upper incisors. Next is nine-year-old horse's teeth that appear narrower and longer from the front view. The angle of incidence in the profile view is steeper than before but not as sharp as expected for this age. Cups have disappeared from the lower jaw and the two central teeth in the upper jaw. All teeth are becoming more oval shaped except for the upper corners. Dental stars are up starting to merge with the central enamel rings which are becoming smaller and rounder. So in this 10-year-old horse's mouth, 
the angle of incidence is typical and the notch on the upper corner tooth has reappeared. Normally, by 10 years of age, cups have disappeared from all teeth except the upper corners. The back surfaces of the central teeth are changing from being oval shaped to more angular. Much length of teeth relative to the width can be seen in the front view of this 11 year old mouth. A profile view shows considerable angle with the upper corners almost missing the lowers. Cups are all gone and centers and intermediates are assuming angularity. Next is this 12 year old horse's mouth that looks similar to the 11 year old mouth except for the presence of cups in the upper corners and a decrease in the size of central animal rings. Once a horse has a completely smooth mouth, other factors besides age will determine its usefulness. So the best way to assess a horse's physical condition before purchasing it may be to take it home on a trial basis. So at 15 years, all of the cups are gone. The central enamel wings are prominent but are very small and round, and all teeth have become angular. The length of teeth, acute angle of incidence, and triangular surfaces characterize this 21-year-old mouth. Spaces have appeared between the teeth. And lastly, this 30-year-old mouth shows characteristics of extreme age, and all those spaces between the teeth are absent. Next way to estimate a horse's age by checking its teeth is the angle of incidence. The angle formed by the upper and lower incisor teeth in a profile view can indicate a horse's age. As horses age, the angle of incidence changes from 160 to 180 degrees to less than a right angle, causing the incisors to slant forward and outward. At 7 years old, a notch, hook, or dovetail forms on the upper corners of the teeth due to this slant. This feature can disappear or reappear around 12 to 15 years old and varies between horses, but most have a well-developed notch at 7 years old. The surfaces of the lower corner teeth do not wear completely to the back margin of the uppers as the slant increases. Lastly, the shape of the surface of the teeth. The shape of horse teeth changes significantly due to wear and aging. Young horses have teeth that are broad and flat with the width that is twice their depth. However, as horses reach or pass 20 years of age, this condition reverses itself, and their teeth become twice as deep from front to rear as they are wide. Between 8 and 12 years old, the back surfaces of the teeth become oval, and at around 15 years old, they become triangular in shape. So there are also abnormalities of the teeth. But the topic only covers how to determine the age of the horse by checking its teeth. First, why should we find out the weight of our horses? It is crucial to know the horse's weight since it shows whether your animal is healthy. That directly impacts the amount of food you should provide daily and the payload your horse can carry. Since being overweight can cause health issues, you should be careful and regularly check this value and keep it under control. Horses are of different sizes across breeds, and their weight also depends on the nutrition they have been given. There are a variety of horse breeds and shapes. The average weight has a large range. The weight will vary primarily depending on the horse breed, age, and height. There's also the impact of their genes, which can control traits like how weight is carried, metabolism, and appetite. A horse can weigh anything from 300 to 1,000 kilograms. Like their height, this measurement will vary drastically across different breeds that are different sizes and age. The average horse weight range significantly varies depending on their type. For example, large horse breeds will most likely weigh between 1,700 to 2,000 pounds. Large horse breeds include draft horses like Belgians or Percherons. Conversely, light horses like Arabians typically weigh between 900 to 1,500 pounds. Ponies will weigh even less on different horse types. At the table shown are the different types of horses and their average weight. For draft horses, their average weight is between 680 to 997 kilograms. And for light, their average weight is between 362 to 680 kilograms. The horse's weight also depends on the breed. But... It is not carved in stone. There are many exceptions within a breed, but there's an idea of what to expect. 
as you would assume, bigger horse breeds are going to weigh more than smaller horse breeds. For instance, a thoroughbred would be expected to weigh between 450 to 500 kg, while a Shire horse would come in at 700 to 1,200 kg. Ponies are smaller and can range from a Shetland pony at 180 to 200 kg to a larger breed like the Fell pony at 350 to 450 kg. The breed which can carry the heaviest weight is the Shire horse. The average horse weight for Shire horses is 1,100 kg and it can carry 20% of their body weight. The largest and heaviest horse ever recorded was named Mammoth and it was a Shire horse. He was 219 cm tall and weighed 1,524 kg. In the table are some breeds of horse and their average weight. And as you can see, they vary between breeds, such as the Arabian horse which weighs only 350 to 450 kg in comparison to the Suffolk Punch which weighs 750 to 900 kg. The weight of the horse will also be based on their height. So there is a rule that an average horse, cis weight, range depends on its height. However, some horses can be lighter or heavier for a particular height. Height is a major factor for a horse's weight as the increased frame of a taller horse will add bulk. So this needs to be considered when deciding if a horse is at an healthy level. So here are horse heights in hand and their average weight. So a shorter horse such as a nine hands only weighs for about 190.5 to 240.5 kg in comparison to a much taller horse such as the 18 hands which weighs about 701 to 1,041 kilograms. And we can also measure horse weight based on age. You can always calculate the expected horse weight range at life stages from newborns to adults. Newborn foal usually weighs 10% of its mother's weight. Interestingly, its weight always depends on the mother, and the father's weight will have minimal influence on this particular trait. However, First-time mares almost always give birth to slightly smaller foals. There are few exceptions you should count on. Even though twins are rare in horses, they sometimes happen. In that case, both foals will have under-average weight. Another option includes premature foals or those with birth issues that require immediate vet attention. The weight of the horse will increase as the horse grows older. So in the weanling stage, foal gains 2.25 pounds per day. In the yearling stage, foal reaches 50% of the full-grown weight, and as a 2-year-old, the foal reaches 90% of the full-grown weight, and finally, as a 4-year-old, the horse reaches the total adult weight. A few crucial factors impacts a horse's weight, like the amount of food you offer your animal daily. Its daily needs are 1.5% to 3% of its body weight, but your horse needs to exercise enough to prevent overweight problems. So, how to weigh a horse? The most accurate method for estimating a horse weight using a weight tape is the formula method, which requires two measurements be made in inches. When a weight scale is not available or practical, the formula method is the method of choice. So first, measure heart girth and body length as indicated below. Second, estimate the horse's body weight using the appropriate weight formula. Third, to monitor progress over time, measure the horse at the same time of day for greater accuracy, ideally in the morning before feeding. So for measuring the heart girth, measure around the horse's girth by placing tape across the highest part of the withers and keeping the tape as close behind the elbows as possible. Measure this in inches. So for body length, use two people to measure from the point of the shoulder straight back along the horse's side to the point of the botox or crease as shown. Measure this in inches. So for the equine weight formulas, the formula for the adult horse will be heart girth times heart girth times body length divided by 330. For the yearling, heart girth times heart girth times body length divided by 301. For the windling, heart girth times heart girth times body length divided by 280. In the wild, horses naturally lose weight over the winter and accumulate fat stores during the summer to sustain them over the colder months. However, many domestic horses are given extra food and shelter over the winter, leading to extra weight that is not easily lost. To help your horse lose weight, you should aim for a simple formula. Your horse will need to burn more calories than they are consuming to drop the pounds. 
here are some tips to help your horse lose weight. Number one, get exercising. Even if your horse isn't ridden, you can exercise them by longing, long reining, using horse walker tracking systems, or walking in hand to help them burn calories. Make sure you work in line with your horse's current fitness level. Number two, reduce hard food intake. Slowly wean your horse off any unnecessary food and instead feed pelleted vitamin and mineral supplements or balancers to provide your horse with the nutrients they need to stay healthy. Number three, restrict grazing. If your horse is out of grass, it can be challenging to know how much they are eating. To reduce grass intake, consider strip grazing, using sheep to munch down grass, or using a grazing muscle, which has been shown to reduce gr grass intake by around 80%. Number four, look at forage. Have hay analyzed to show the NSC levels, which is water-soluble carbohydrates plus starch, to see if it is suitable for your horse. If this is impossible, soaking hay for between 1 and 12 hours reduces levels of NSCs which leach out in the water. If you do this, it's particularly important to provide your horse with a vitamin and mineral source, as other nutrient levels also decrease with soaking. Number 5. Don't starve your horse. Horses are designed to trickle feed. And although it may seem like a good idea to withhold feed, they need some forage so at least every few hours. Withholding feed can lead to ulcers, colic, or hypidemia. And that is all our tips for horse weight management. Horses, both in harness and as mounts, have played a prominent role throughout history. They have been used for various purposes including war, farming, herding cattle, transportation, sporting events, and even as showpieces because of their beauty. What is it about these animals that makes them so versatile? To this day, researchers have been studying them to determine why they are such superb athletes and yet, at the same time, surprisingly fragile. At this juncture, we will be discussing the equine exercise physiology. It focuses on studying the physical aspects of the equine athlete. The Physiology and Locomotion the hoof of the horse. As we can see, the horse is different among domestic livestock as it does not have a cloven hoof. The horse travels on its third metacarpal and metatarsal digits. The distal one half of the digit's second phalanx and the entire third phalanx are encased within a highly modified and vascular type of dermis called the corium of the foot. The horn of the hoof grows from the inside out as well as from the top down. The horny material of the hoof grows from the sensitive tissues of the dermis and they are bonded together tightly by a complex laminar structure. The laminar structures of the foot are held together in a delicate balance, which can be easily upset by various factors. This includes diet, stress, concussion, or injury. Excessive concussion, which could occur in the horse is worked hard on a hard surface, can cause inflammation of the lamina of the hoof, leading to founder. Founder or laminitis is a multi-causal complex syndrome that can result in disaster for many horses. Next, the bone structure. Bones perform several important functions in the body. The most obvious function lies in the structure and movement of the body. They provide a rigid framework, a jointed frame, which the muscles act on to produce movement. Bones must be of a size and mineral content that can sustain the loads placed on them during movement. Yet, they must be light enough that the body is able to provide sufficient energy to move them. We have now the ligaments and tendons. The ligaments act to bind bones together at the joints and stabilize joint articulations. They attach one bone to another. The ligaments are composed of a grouping of many long, thin collagenous fibers packed closely together, forming a dense connective tissue. On the other hand, the muscles are attached to the bones by collagenous fibers that extend from the muscles and form tendons. The tendons are constructed of many thin, coiled fibers and are capable of limited stretching, as well as acting as attachments for the muscle bodies. The tendons help absorb shock. Within the stunt phase of a stride, 
the tendons store elastic energy as they are stretched. Later in the stride, the tendons rebound, releasing the elastic energy collected in the stance phase. Muscles In horses, significant changes occur to the muscle and its vascular system as a result of training over a period of four to six months. Muscle is the first tissue that adapts to training. It is also the first to return to its untrained state following rest. Compared with other species, a horse's athletic potential is evident in the fact that essentially half of its body mass is composed of muscle. Muscle may account for up to 52% of a thoroughbred race horse's live weight. The muscle of the horse is a powerful force. Through selective breeding, this muscle has become specialized to perform the many different tasks required of these animals. Next, we have the potential complications in working horses. First, we have the muscle fatigue. Muscle fatigue often occurs with too high intensity of workouts or work. It has an impact on muscle overload and in effect the motor apparatus and motor skills of the horse. Finally, it leads to greater susceptibility to muscular and skeletal injury. Proper preparation of the horse for training and after exercise care will help avoid overtiredness and will affect faster regeneration of the body. Second, heat dissipation. It is important to remember that roughly half of a horse's body is composed of muscle tissue, which can be a potential problem for a hardworking horse. Horses are also able to dissipate some heat through their respiratory system. Roughly 25% of the excess heat is dissipated in this way. In an overheated horse, panting, which is referred to as inversion, is an indication that the horse is having difficulty dissipating heat through the sweating process. Difficulty dissipating heat can increase the horse's vulnerability to life-threatening exercise-induced hyperthermia or heat stroke. The horse's well-developed ability to sweat is a mixed blessing. Sweating helps cool the working muscle, yet fluid and electrolyte losses contribute to the problems in overheated horse. Physiology and the Cardiovascular System The cardiovascular system is composed of three essential elements. First, the heart, the pump of the system that moves blood throughout the body. Second, the tubular structures such as the veins, arteries, and capillaries. Third, the blood that carries nutrients and oxygen to the body tissues as well as absorbs carbon dioxide and waste products from the tissues. Fluid components of the blood also aid in cooling muscle tissues. In response to training, a human athlete's resting heart rate decreases dramatically. Similar changes in equine athletes are minimal and therefore are not considered a practical indicator of fitness in horses. The average horse's normal resting heart rate is about 35 beats per minute. In response to training, horses are not able to significantly increase their stroke volume. Therefore, significant increases in cardiac output must come from an increased heart rate. Horses can increase their heart rate up to a maximal rate of 220 beats per minute, which represents about a six-fold increase above the resting rate. Lastly, we have the physiology and the respiratory system. In horses, the respiratory system does not adapt as a response to training. Changes in oxygen carrying capacity may occur but are not directly the result of changes in the respiratory system itself.